Heavenly Father, what a uh, joy it is to be here on this beautiful Saturday uh, afternoon. Lord, as we stand here in your presence with family and friends, your angels round about us, and we, we celebrate this union, uh, this covenant, this marriage that has uh, been blessed for now 30 years. And today, uh, we want to pause and we want to thank you for your grace and for your goodness. I invite your Holy Spirit to be present here in a very tangible and and powerful way. And I pray your blessing, Lord, as we reaffirm this covenant, that's for as long as they both shall live. I thank you for this. I speak it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Okay. Um, Something borrowed. Proverbs 31 bracelet. Oh, I went a back, but it's just part. <laughs> okay. It was 30 years ago, but in many ways, I'm sure it feels like only yesterday. Only yesterday that you left work and got pulled over by the police on the, on the way or was it exiting? We weren't sure we were talking about that. Uh, but very excited to get married. You were going to go back to work that day, but you said, you know what, let's go ahead and let's, let's take a day off. And let's do this different. And uh, God has done an amazing work in your life. I've only had the honor to know you in these, these last few years, but you guys were such a blessing uh, to me, to my family and our church family, and such a, a wonderful representation of who Jesus is and what a marriage really should be. 1 Corinthians 13 is a familiar verse, but it's a verse I don't want you to just consider on this day. I want you to consider each day moving forward. I want you to insert your name in that passage where it says love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Chuck does not envy. Georgia does not boast. She is not proud. Chuck is not rude. He is not self-seeking. He is not easily angered. Georgia keeps no record of wrongs. She does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. See, love always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. It always perseveres. Love, it never fails. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these, well, the greatest of these is love. As you now face one another, it's time to share and reaffirm your vows of commitment to each other. These vows are a reaffirmation of what you shared 30 years ago, but they're just as important today as they were then. These words will be a continual reminder to one another of your love and of the covenant that you're bound to in that love. Chuck, would you share your vows? Plan B. (laughs) I grabbed the wrong paper. That is fantastic. (laughs) And I'm sure that makes you think of many different stories throughout your marriage that goes back over the last 30 years. (laughs) That is is so good. That's so good. Here we go. 30 years ago, I wasn't really sure I knew what love was, but I knew what commitment was, and I was committed to spending my life with you. In this first 30 years, you've taught me by example what sacrificial love is, and everyone who's ever known you has been blessed by your example of love. Your love gave me the courage to take on challenges that I never would have done without you. Your love so often shown by your supporting and encouraging actions more powerful than words could ever be has filled my life with joy. On November 3rd, 1983, I stood at a payphone in Alexandria and I took a first step down a pathway that I knew God was leading me. Ever since then, I've known God brought you into my life. I am so thankful to have shared these first 30 years with you. Together, as we stand here before God, our family and friends, I vow my love to you, Georgia, to have and to hold in sickness and in health. That's where a laugh comes. In good times and in difficulties, whether wealthy or poor, until my earthly body ceases to exist, I will love and cherish you and value you as the wonderfully made masterpiece of my Heavenly Father. Now, as we begin the next 30 years of our life together, here in the presence of God, our family and our friends who have gathered together to share this memory with us, I pledge myself to continue my devotion to you as long as we both shall live. I promise to love, comfort, honor, and keep you. 
I pledge my love, loyalty, and support to you as your wedded husband, forsaking all others for as long as we both shall live. Once we um, were told about this and somebody had texted me and said, are you going to write your own vows? I'm like, yeah. A-E-I-O-U and sometimes Y. <laughs> A, Chuck, you are my amazing dream come true. E, you excite me. You are absolutely extraordinary. You enchant me by your magical ways of endearing me to you. I, you are irreplaceable to me. You inspire me with your intimate, intoxicating, and comparable ways. Oh, you are my one and only partner, whom I so deeply and outrageously love completely. You are unique. Our love for each other is unique, unlike any other. Why you make me complete? Chuck, it has been 30 years ago that we first pledged our commitment to one another. But I feel like our honeymoon has never ended. We have been through a lot together. Laughter, tears, joy, fear, sickness, and sorrow. We have stood beyond stood by each other through it all. Today in front of our family and our friends, I want to renew those vows again, pledging my love and life to you. Chuck, I promise to be there for you in sickness and in health. I am here to be your supporter, your confidant, and your best friend. I have been blessed for the last 30 years and am thrilled in that I get to spend the rest of my life with you. Until God decides to call one of us away, I only want to be with you here on earth, and then we shall meet again in the land that has been promised to us on the other side. I love you more than I than these words can even begin to express. You are my knight in shining armor, and my happily ever. Was amazing. Chuck, you're intoxicating. <laughs> that is fantastic. Wow. And Lord, I thank you for Chuck. I thank you for Georgia. And I speak a blessing over them. Lord, I pray that the latter would be greater than the former. I pray a blessing over their children and their grandchildren and, and their children's children's children. Lord, I pray a legacy of faith of hope, and of love, Lord God, uh, would be upon them. And Lord, I thank you for the many people that they impact in our church family and, and in our world, that you'd continue to use them to shine uh, the light of Jesus, the good news, the gospel. It's the good news of your grace and how much you love us and you desire to have a relationship with us. I thank you for that. So this is my prayer, Philippians chapter 1, verse 9 that your love will flourish and that you will not only love much, but well. That you'll learn to love appropriately. You need to use your head and test your feelings so that your love is sincere and intelligent, not simply sentimental gush. Live a lover's life, circumspect and exemplary. A life Jesus would be proud of. Bountiful in fruits from the soul, making Jesus Christ attractive to all getting everyone involved in the glory and the praise of God. Now may the Lord bless you, may He keep you. May the Lord smile upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you His favor, and may He give you His peace. I thank you for this couple, and I thank you for the gift of today. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Today you are still joined together with the partner of your choosing. And it's my privilege to pronounce again uh, and to your family and friends and for you to hear in this group in the sight and the presence of God, I now pronounce, pronounce you husband and wife. 
Charles, you may kiss your bride.